Hey guys, it's Mara. In today's video, I want to show you um, how to do a spun microhematocrit or a manual hematocrit. Um, there's probably a couple different names for it. Um, but what you will need are some glass tubes. Um, these are just plain capillary tubes. It says soda lime glass color code is selected. Um, and these are 75 millimeters in length. Now these are really pretty thin so they can be broken. Like I said, they are glass. Um, so you don't want to press too hard on them or you can break them, which I happened to do earlier. Let me see if I can focus on that. Not very well. Um, but there is a little blue rim and that when you add the um, blood then you will press down and this is kind of like clay stuff and that kind of stop puts a little stopper in it um, and that'll make it um, there we go now I can focus that'll keep the blood from coming out and here's what one looks like that's empty and actually that clay should be on this end, but it's the exact same distance. So anyway, um, besides the tubing, you'll also need something to seal it with. Um, this little tray is called a Baxter mini seal. It's kind of old looking, um, but you can see all the holes that have already been used up with the clay like substance. Um, and then this is an example of what one looks like. This one's been sitting down for a while um, So it's kind of moved a little bit, but I'll show you guys how to use um, a paper like this. There's also the um, The old metal circles that you can use um, that you spin around but it works the same way as these papers do and you'll also need some kind of centrifuge that will spin your uh, micro hematocrit tubes and um, this is what ours looks like so you always want to make sure your um, micro spin or whatever kind of centrifuge you have is balanced so and another thing which I may or may not have messed up on earlier is um, you want to make sure and put um, the stoppered end on the outside. If you put it towards the middle, it'll migrate to the end, and that's actually what happened on this one because the clay started out here. And then in, when that happens, you'll get blood everywhere, which is not good. So, um, I'm gonna show you guys how you can fill the blood and then uh, where to go from there. So, also you'll need, obviously, the blood that you're gonna try to figure out the hematocrit from. Okay, so next we have our tube. This is a fresh new tube. Oops. Focus. And we have our sealing deals. And then we're also going to use our tube of blood. So what you want to do is tilt your tube of blood um, about horizontal and then add in your tubing and then wipe it off um, with just some tissue and um, then while you're keeping it level pretty quickly you want to turn it over and then use the stopper now you have to do it pretty fast um, before the blood comes out and also you don't want to do it too fast and apply too much pressure because you can snap this tube in half so I'm going to go ahead and do that next okay so here's our blood we want to And you want to fill it up about as far as you can, but at least halfway. Okay. So there's our tube. As you can see, there's a little bit that's not filled, but that's okay. I'm going to wipe it on our chem wipe. Okay, so some of it did start coming out, but I did decently. 
and there you can see all the way to the blue stopper is where that um, clay like stopper stuff is whatever it's called mini seal Oops. there's that okay so next thing is you want to just clean that off and then you can put it in the centrifuge and it's ready to go to spin okay so here's our balance tube we want to place our other tube with the stopper end on the outside um, because the centrifugal force will pull the red cells down and then you'll be able to see the plasma at a certain height and then the red cells should be you know about down here to that mark and then we will measure it next so yeah making sure those are right across from each other I'm going to add the lid so you can use this to also read it And our spins for five minutes. There we go. Okay. So make sure our lid's closed. just got done. We're going to pop that lid up. Everything looks good so far. Nothing broke. <laughs> I feel like these break really easy. Maybe I just hulked out on them. I'm not sure. Okay. So, get this undone. And we're going to use our little paper here. Oh, part of it broke. Okay, well, that's all right. Now, here in our paper, um, what we have to do, so it says here, place the centrifuge micrometric tube vertically on the chart with the bottom edge of the crito cap just touching the red line below the 0% line. The bottom of the column of the blood should be at the 0% line. Slide the tube along the chart until the meniscus of the plasma intersects 100% line. The height of the packed red cell column is then read directly as percent cell volume. Okay, so we need to, the edge of the crito cap, that would be... that little white part guy. So, we want to have, let's see if I can get that to focus. We want it right about there. Right there, that looks good. And then, we have to have that plasma so it goes all the way to it hits the 100% line. It's hard to hold. So we gotta have that right on the line. And then move it's right at the 100% line, right there. So then we can read, let's make sure everything's lined up still. There we go. So then you wanna read that line right at 41 to 44. Now, if you had a less plasma and, well, just less whole blood in there in general, then we could use this um, smaller incline. But this one's for more tubes that are more full. 
thank you guys for watching i hope you found this video informative and helpful and i will see you guys later bye